Hi, Hi Meeple Watchers. Watchers! I'm Frank. And I'm Brandon. Today we're going to talk about our top 10 board games. So we have been playing board games really for the past year. It's been about a year since we've really dove into the hobby when we decided one day to pick up a copy of Cash Flow. It started with Cash Flow and then it led to Small World and Ticket to Ride. Those were the gateway games. And in the past year alone, we have played over 50 board games for the first time. So that's at least one game a week on average <laughs> in, in just a year's time. Learning the game, getting into it, playing with friends, playing with each other, and it's been a lot of fun. Would yes, you agree? Definitely. Lots of fun. Lots of learning. <laughs> yeah, lots of learning. We've played a lot of light games, a lot of heavy games. So what we've done is we have gone through all of the games that we've played and we're going to share with you our official top 10 list for 2020. So Brandon has his list. I have my list. It's a secret right now <laughs> and we'll see if there's some overlap and we'll see uh, what comes up. So yeah, how about we start with our, we'll start with 10 and then we'll go all the way down to our number one games. Now, just disclaimer, we have a lot of games that we still need to explore in this hobby. I know that my want to play list just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So this is just after our year of board games, given the 50 to 60 games that we've actually immersed ourselves in. So how about we begin? All right. All right, why don't you share your number 10 game? My number 10 game, Dice Forge. Ooh. Why Dice Forge? Why Dice Forge? Um... I think it was a surprise for me. I really like the the dice aspect and rolling, and you get to change your dice yeah. all the time yeah. uh, with every every roll, every turn. So I think I really like that because you're like building up that dice, and mm -hmm. it's I don't know. It was just fun for me, and there's so many options. I really like the options part too. Yeah, it's a very unique game. I don't. I like that. There's no other game like it. We discovered that game at a board game cafe together, and we thought, oh, this looks kind of cool. And I remember we just, we we thought we would just play once, and I think we played two or three times just in the first sitting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you bought it. And then I bought it. Brandon's like, oh, I'm getting the, I think one day you surprised, yes. you surprised us I with surprised. it. I surprised. You did surprise me with it. Good choice, good choice. All right, for my number 10, I went with, I want to make sure I say it right. <laughs> J Jaipur, Jaipur, not Jaipur, Jaipur, <laughs> and I visited that city, so it's wild. I can't remember the name. All right, so mine is Jaipur, which is a two-player card game, and I just think this is such. It's just such an easy game to pull out, get into. It's fun. We bring it when we travel, so we've actually played it on the plane, sitting next to each other. And I just enjoy this game. It's just whenever I think of a, a game night that I want to keep light, my go-to is, is Jaipur. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a fun one to um, play with new people, too. It is, yeah. Uh, I love the theme, uh, the trading spices, trading goods. Uh, and I, it's a game that I just see us always keeping around. So I went with Jaipur for, for my number 10. All, All right. right, what's your number nine? Number nine. Five Tribes. Ooh. I really like Five Tribes. Once again, there's just a new game board every single time with yeah. where you're placing those, that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there's so many different things that you can do um, compared to whoever else you're playing with. So there's you don't always have to compete with one another, but you can compete and it's just... It's fun. It's fun, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to say much more, but, but because maybe that will be on my list a little bit later. <laughs> I know that's on your list. <laughs> <laughs> it is. By the way, we have not uploaded in a while. We've moved to a new part of Seattle, and this is actually our new table, which we enjoy because it gives us so much more space to actually play games <laughs> as opposed to our little table we used to play on before. <laughs> So we will hopefully be putting out more videos now that we've settled into our new place. All right, so my number nine is The Isle of Cats. The Isle of Cats, such an adorable game. We have that and uh, a couple of our friends introduced us to this game and we just thought the theme was so, so, so cute. Uh, basically, you are trying to 
rescue these cats off of an island and a acquire as much treasure as you can and fit the cats into your boat. And it's kind of plays like Tetris where you have to just maneuver the cats so they fit onto your board space. And it's another one of those really light games that uh, is just always fun and it's just so adorable. <laughs> it's the, one of the cutest games, I it think. It is. All the colored cats. Yeah. And then you get to place them anywhere on the board. and yeah. Well, not anywhere, but it's just fun. I it's like a, that it's game, It's a too. cute game. I had to see if that was on my list. I bet you it is. I'm I, not going to say if it I is. I think it is. All right, what's your number eight? <laughs> number eight. Number eight, Pandemic. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Fitting for this year. <laughs> we got that game before the pandemic hit. Yes. <laughs> like right be, before. And then it was fun to bring it out and tell people, hey, let's play our lives. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We're living that game right now. We have to learn how to fix this. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So why pandemic? Why pandemic? I think it's fun because you play with people yeah. to try to save the planet. And I like that camaraderie that you, you create, like mm -hmm. a couple of other games out there, which might be on my list as well mm -hmm. but yeah i really like that you get to play with people yeah. and have different um job sets and then do different top do different things on the board yeah yeah it's a good co-op game and that was one of my honorable mentions it came close uh i do want to play the pandemic legacy which we've talked about for a while we haven't actually started but yeah pandemic i can definitely see why you chose that one all right, so for my number eight, I did Viticulture. Viticulture, the Essential Edition. I love Viticulture so much because, first of all, the theme, I, I love it. Just you are, you're bottling wine in the Italian vineyards, and I just think it's so cute how you have those little glass beads that represent the little whatever they are. Like different the, kinds of wine. The different kinds of wine. Rosé, white, and red. Yeah, and I like how the game plays with time as a mechanic, how every single round your wine actually ages and it becomes more valuable and you can blend the red wines with the white, white wines to make you know the, the different like rosés and, and champagnes. Um, I think it is just... And it's just a beautiful game. I love it because there's also memories too. When, when we've played it, we've we've put on Italian music in the background, <laughs> and it just feels like we are in Italy. So I love playing Viticulture. And it's one of those that we went on Etsy and bought upgrades <laughs> to some of the things to make it more fun. We did, we did buy the upgrades. Yeah, any board game people out there, be careful about Etsy. <laughs> You can easily just go and acquire so many cute sp uh, pieces, and we've we've upgraded a few. Yeah, Viticulture being definitely one of them. So that was my number eight. All right, number seven. Number seven. I can put mine in order. Okay, <laughs> seven wonders. Ooh. Seven for seven wonders. That's fitting. That's fitting. <laughs> um, so for this one, we played Seven Wonders Duel first, yes. and we really liked it. Mm -hmm. I really liked it. I had a hard time figuring out which one do I like more. But then we played Seven Wonders, mm -hmm. and I do. It's so hard. It's like both of them into one. <laughs> yeah. But I like it because, I don't know, it's unique. There's so many rounds mm -hmm. and it, it just builds on those cards harder and harder. Yeah. And um, you get to pick the different job sets, right? Yeah. 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 Really like it. Yeah, there's different ways you could win, yeah. right? You could go up the scientific track. Yes. You could go up the military track. Yeah. Seven Wonders. I Yeah. Not going to say anything else. <laughs> okay, so my number seven, A Feast for Odin. Ooh. A Feast for Odin. So uh, this is one of the heavier games in my top ten. We were eyeing A Feast for Odin for, I'm going to say months, and we were just waiting for that right time, and when we finally picked it up, I gave it to you as a gift, right? And we started to play, and... I just think this is the most sandbox type game we have. I mean, there's just, you could go, you can do anything in this game, whether it be acquire new, you really do feel like you're taking on the Viking persona. You could uh, conquer new islands. Um, you could just pillage. You could hunt. You could go whale catching. I mean, it's just, it's, it goes on and on. There's over 60 different actions that you could do on a turn, which is wild. We've played this with just us. We've played it with four people. I think it scales well. And yeah, A Feast for Odin is one of those games that 
there's just, I'm, I still feel like I'm needing to play that game to become better at it because this one keeps winning and doing better and better. <laughs> I'm doing worse and worse. <laughs> so it's one of those games that pulls me in because I just wanna become better at the game. It's almost like you're not just competing with other people, you're competing with yourself. And, and I love how the first few times we played it, we thought we were never going to fill up our board. We're like, how are we gonna actually finish this? It just, the, the game just goes faster and faster pace and you feel like you're running out of time, but actually you're not. So it all just comes together in the end. The game is an emotional roller coaster a little bit, but I, I really enjoy it. So Feast for Odin is my number seven. I like that game too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number six. Number six, Pendulum. Oh, okay. Yes, it's a, it's a new game that we got, a newer yeah. game. Yeah. Um, it was a, it's a lot of fun. I like the time aspect because yeah. you, it's a really fast paced game. Yeah. And, <laughs> and be honest, he likes that because he doesn't have to wait for me. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I could take a shower in between your turns. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I like Pendulum. <laughs> yeah. I figured you'd put that one. I did. Uh, the different time, the, this different sand. The sand, sand timers, sand yeah. Sand timers. Except it's, that one that doesn't work sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, I really like it because yeah. there's just, there's a couple things you could do and yeah. I we haven't played all the way through in which we've actually played correctly because you're moving so fast, so fast yeah. sometimes. It's like the colors, to me, they mix up with yeah. different things. So it's my fault, mostly. Mostly. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a hard game to track to make sure everyone's doing the right thing. And I want to play that with some more people. I mean, when this pandemic ends and we can actually play with people, that's one of those games that I'm curious to see how it works with three or four people when everyone's hands are going all over the board. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's a unique game. I'm not surprised you have the one there. And especially the spots you could only go in there once with one person. Oh yeah, yeah. It really is a race to get to some of those areas. That game is a little bit stressful for me <laughs> as a player that likes to think and process, but I know for Brandon, <laughs> who likes to move very fast, it is a fun game. It is pretty cool. All right, so for my number six, I went with Seven Wonders. Okay. And I also just included Duel with that. <laughs> just the whole Seven Wonders franchise. I, I couldn't really choose between one or the other. I wanted to include them both in my top 10. Uh, like Brandon said, we started with Duel and then we played Seven Wonders. I think both games are just as awesome. Love the theme. I, I think it's so cool to have the dual game because if you're just playing two players, it's great. And I think if I were to pick one over the other, I would go with Seven Wonders. I would prefer to play with three or four people because I like the play and pass mechanic. I like when you play a card, pass card, mm -hmm. kind of like with Isle of Cats. Yeah. Uh, I, love, I love this game so much. I think it's just a classic game. I think every person who is in the tabletop world, this is just a required game to have. It's a cl it's a classic. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's and so it's, fun. I think it's an easier game. Too. It's yeah, it's easy enough to just start getting into, but also it's it, there's layers to it. There's a lot of ways you can earn points. I always love a game that has kind of a point salad where there's a lot of different. You're always getting points somehow. So yeah, love Seven Wonders. Definitely want to play that more. Now. Oh, top five. Top five. Top five. Um, ba -dum. <laughs> My number five, Feast for Odin. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why? Why? Because there's so much you can do. Yeah. I, I think I really like sandbox games. Yeah. If you have 60 different moves you can do, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Like some people have that analysis paralysis, but yeah, you like that. I like that. <laughs> you like the choices. Just the choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like sometimes like it's just not a bad choice, no matter what you do. That's true. Um, yeah. But like you do have to plan out ahead a little bit with the choices together to you do. really hit that game home. You do. Yeah. 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 I can't blame you. I had that in my list. My top five, it was difficult. This is where it got really hard for me. 
I put number five, Castles of Burgundy. Castles of Burgundy. So a friend actually lent us this game and I, as we started playing it, I just found this game to be incredible. The more I played it, the more I enjoyed it. You remember this one? Yeah, I remember it. I like it because you have your own player mat and you're building into your own kind of city. And I like the dice component. It's it's not really, doesn't feel like it's really luck-based because you get to use those worker tiles to adjust your die. So it, it balances out with the strategy being it much, I think it's much more of a strategy game. And it's, it's really cool. I know that there is a, we played the regular traditional version, the main version. I know that there is a newer version mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm curious to try that one out. I think it looks beautiful. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of Castles of Burgundy. We've played this two, I think two player, it's great. We've done four player, it's mm -hmm. great. And also with four players, it still plays in about 90 minutes to maybe two hours if it's newer people. So I like that you can still kind of progress. So uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I, I think I just like that medieval type, I don't know, that theme. You, you know do. what I mean? Now I that just, I think about all the games that you, you like. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm just a fan of that theme overall. So Castles of Burgundy. Yep, my number five. <laughs> number four! Number four. Tapestry for me. What? <laughs> we just got this one. We just got this one. I'm shocked. I know. Um, For me, I don't, I don't know. It's just, once again, there's so much to do in it. Um, and the, the different job type patterns, the four, mm -hmm. and... I don't know. I just I just like it. Yeah, it's fun. It is fun. Yeah, I had a feeling you might put this one. It's such a fresh game. I I wonder when we make this if we make another video next year if this is tapestry is going to be in your in your list. I don't know. It's, it's just one of those because it's maybe new. It's, it's new. Out there, but yeah. I like it. I will say that tapestry I think has the most gorgeous pieces, the highest production value. Um, it's up there, and I think between that and maybe one other game where we both were like, oh my gosh, these these building pieces are just, they're, they're beautiful, they're sturdy, they're colorful, they're just painted nicely. It's just, yeah, it looks gorgeous on the table. Nice. Um, so you're a fan of some of the Stonemaier games. You had Pendulum, you had Tapestry. I okay. know. Excellent. All right, I had Small World Ooh. as my number four. <laughs> Small World, I just, this game's special because... I think it was really our first game. It was our gateway game. Uh, like cash flow, it was a different, that, that was like more of a, a money management. It's yeah. still a good game, we liked it, but Small, Small World really opened up the door to the tabletop world for us. Yeah. And I, I, love, I love the game. And I have not even played any other expansions. There's, I know that there's other types of, of expansions and just the basic version of the game for me is wonderful. I love that you don't know the final score until the very end. So there's that surprise component. We've played this with two, four players, five players. And I love that the board gets bigger as you play. I mean, the five player game we did was pretty epic. It was just so cool. I, I love that every game, there's it, it, there's a variety of the, the different races and the different, what is it? Like the skills or the class that they have. Yeah. So those combinations are always changing every single game. And I just, it's a game I'll never get bored of. Uh, I, yeah, small world to me, special place in my heart. I'm always gonna cherish that game. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not gonna say anything else. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what are we on, our top three? Top three. Okay, let's do it. My number three, small world. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like it for those same reasons, yeah. um, but I also like it because we haven't even gotten into any of the expansions yet, mm -hmm. and we're not bored with this game. Yeah. And there's so many expansions that I'm excited to go and play, but I still just like the regular game that we have. Yeah. It just, it scales well. It's it's fun. Yeah. yeah. that's We have that pretty close on yes. our list. <laughs> okay. Uh, so my number three was Carcassonne. However, only the big box number six, because I thought about it. Carcassonne, just the base version of the game, I don't think that really excites me so much. We started out getting Big Box 6. I think there was some kind of uh, like Black Friday deal last year. Yes. And we decided to get it. I remember 
we were like, oh my gosh, what is in this? It was such a big box that it came in. And basically it, co it comes with 10 or 12 expansions. Yeah. So what we did is we started with the base game and every single time we played, we added an expansion, added one of the expansions. And we were basically able to customize our ideal a style of game that we like with a handful of expansions and we left out the other ones. So our customized uh, Carcassonne that we play, I love. I, I think that this game, it's, it's a light game. Anyone could just pick up, pick it up and start playing. It's just a tile laying game. It's another medieval theme game, right? During in a French city of Carcassonne. And it's, it's fun. I mean, I love how you're, you're, I, I mean, the meeples, lots of meeples. We are the meeple watchers. So if the game that has lots of meeples, I'm going to like it probably. And yeah, every single game, it's exciting. Uh, just the different ways you can get points. And there's that end of game scoring where it really is fun to see at the very end who's gonna take the lead. So it just kind of keeps you going throughout the very end. I I'm a huge fan of, of Carcassonne. Again, this is one of those classic games that I think everyone needs to have in their library. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I won't say anything else. Okay, What's <laughs> we're in our top two. Top two. This was so hard, okay. <sighs> I almost feel like I should switch my top two, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> stick with it. I'm gonna stick with it. I, I'm I'm good with where mine is. All right, what's your number two? Number two, Everdale. What? Yes. I thought this was gonna be your number one. <laughs> wow. I love it. I love it because of the meeples. There are so many different meeples in this one. Yeah. And like you said, where you are the meeple they're watchers. The they're cute, just so cute. unique and they're so cute. cute. I want to be all of them every single time, but <laughs> it's hard to narrow them down. And I don't have a favorite one. Yeah, yeah. So I like it because there's just, it's so cute. The animals, I love animals. They're cute. I just want to bop them all on the head. <laughs> <laughs> there's just the, the um, like the money, not the money, the stone and the wood and the, the amber. The berries. The berries. It's just yeah. all very cute. And then the big tree. I love the things that you can build on games. So I yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, we did get a couple of the expansions. We did. Weren't thrilled with all of them. No. <laughs> we tried Pearlbrook. We weren't really a huge fan. But we do want to try the other ones. Yeah. Yes. We do want to try the others. But I do really, really like that one. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to put that at number one. I, I was, I'm so up in the air with one and two. But I know. Yeah. yeah, it's so close. For my, I'm just going to stick with what I had. Now I feel like switching it. So for my number two, I put five tribes. Wow. I know. Way number two. Oh yeah, I love this game. I mean, I absolutely love it. It's it's another one of those point salad games where there's a ton of ways to get points. Every single time we play, I feel like there's a different approach. You could go for really collecting the resources. You could, uh, what else can you, you could go for the assassin route and just try to, you know, kill off all the meeples on the board. Um, you could- Trees. There's, oh yeah, there's the trees and the camels. I love the theme. Yeah. I really love the theme a lot. And the tile layout's always different every single time. It's a, it's a unique game because all the meeples are on the board and then you have to maneuver them around. And you really need to think ahead. You need to map out where to maneuver the different tribes of meeples in order to get the most points. I love the genies adding that little special element. I so love this game. Uh, I may, I, it may bump to number one by next year because I just want to play more of it. I really want that Artisans of Nicala expansion. I do not know why it is impossible to find. I ordered it on this one place and they canceled the order because they were, it was just not, in, not in stock. So <laughs> I love this game. I want to find that expansion and yeah, five tribes. I just think is, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. It's, it's like the perfect game. I love it. Oh my gosh. Are we on number one? <laughs> We're on number one. Drum roll. Mm -hmm. What's your number one? Carcassonne. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that has been my favorite game since we got it. Yeah. Um, I just, it's just so much fun. It's, it's easy. It's, there's just so many different things you can do. You can yeah. be friendly or you can be very vindictive in this That's game. That's true. Yeah. Um, and there's just, it's cute. Like the farmer. Yeah. And, you know, all those things yeah. wrapped up in it. It's like, ooh, what do I want to do? And then, like you said, there's some parts I didn't like. like Some expansions. Yeah, some yeah. of the expansions. We just left those but out. But yeah, it has to be the Big Box 6. We like Big Box we, 6, yeah. Yeah, and that reminds me, I, I did get it at like 
the price of the regular Carcassonne. You just got a good deal. Got a really good deal. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm getting this. And thank goodness. goodness. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we say, let's let's play a game, Brandon will always say, Carcassonne. Oh, Carcassonne. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, I'm, I'm not surprised now that you said that. All right, for ni my number one, I did Everdell. Everdell. I did Everdell. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it was so close between Five Tribes and Everdell. I just think it's a special game because we played it on my birthday <laughs> last year when we went to a board game cafe, <laughs> as one does on their birthday. <laughs> so uh, Everdell, just the moment we put it out on the table with the the tree and the, the critters, the little cute meeples... It just hooked us right in, and uh, Everdell, the game just totally took my heart. <laughs> I, I still want to, just like with Five Tribes, I mean, there's very few games where I really feel like I want the expansions, and we think a lot before we end up buying a game. It's like, do I re do we really need an expansion? This isn't one of those games, too, where I so want to try a, this, like the Spire Crest expansion, and uh, again, another game I never see myself growing old of it's beautiful great production value it's fun it's challenging it's it's light yet heavy at the same time it pulls people in so yeah everdell was my number one this year okay yeah <laughs> wow okay so how many we, it seems like we had a few we had in common quite yeah a few. Yeah. Yeah. We had Carcassonne. Yeah. We had everdell I had seven wonders I had small world I had feast for Odin I had five tribes. Wow. So six. We had six out of our top ten in common. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I also noticed that for my top ten, all of them were created from 2009 onward. So all within the past 11 years. So pretty. I feel like we jumped into this hobby at a great time because I think just the tabletop industry has really exploded over the past decade or so. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. Many games to come over the next year. We've got a list of some games. We already are eyeing a few that we're looking to pick up. So any final words? I find it kind of feel scary because I've learned that you can now um, support oh. games. Oh, he just discovered Kickstarter. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> and I see a couple, I have three that I'm really excited about. <laughs> oh my gosh. I saw someone post a picture of their board game library today. They had 2,500. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are we going to turn into those people one day? Oh my gosh. We don't have the space for that right now. But anyways, uh, thank you all for, for tuning in. Yeah. Are we going to do honorable mentions? Oh, you had some honorable mentions? I did. Okay, let's do some honorable mentions. Okay. I could think of some on the spot. Yeah, you go ahead and get started. I have four honor honorable mentions. <laughs> Give them a quick shout out. Yeah. I love cats. I do really like it. I'm it's surprised you didn't do that one. I'm surprised too. Um, I like, I'm thinking about looking at my, I'm just looking at my list and I don't know, I have cats, maybe we'll be on there next year. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Um, viticulture. I like it. It's just a little hard for me and I don't like games that are a little too hard, mm. but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Spirit Island. This was oh on my, my gosh. top three for so long. Yes. But I just feel it keeps dropping off because I just feel like, like. I don't know. I, it's so hard yeah. to win. It is hard. And I feel like all we're doing is just struggling. Struggling. Struggling games are just not my favorite. Yeah. Game, even yeah. though it was on my top three for so long. Yeah. And then Zulkin. I do like that. Yeah. Um, Zulkin's great. Just because of the theme, um, the calendar, the plays, mm -hmm. and how it moves. It's beautiful. I yeah. I it's a really beautiful game. That is, Yeah. Cool. I had, so for honorable mentions, uh, number one is Orleon. Orleon is a game that I would love to play more. I think we only played it once and I thought it was a lot of fun. You have to pick out of the bag and you have these different tiles. You're trying to acquire different resources on the map. So I thought Orleon was one of those games that I, um, it's on my radar. I definitely want to keep uh, playing that one. Agricola is one of my honorable mentions. Now, I don't I'm not more drawn to this game because Brandon cannot stand Agricola. I know that for a fact. Hate it. I like it because it's so tight and challenging. I mean, it is a struggle, 
And that's just like a feast for Odin. I do worse and worse and worse. <laughs> Brandon does better and better and better. So it's just something about me draws me in. I want to learn how to just get into that theme more. And I just think the theme of that's cute. You know, you're building out your farm. So I, I like Agricola. Uh, and then Lost Cities, which is another great two-player game. Uh, I That's very close for me between uh, Jay Purr and uh, Lost Cities. It's the two-player where, it's kind of like a two-player solitaire, mm -hmm. right? You're going on those expeditions. Uh, I think Lost Cities is fun. Another easy, fun, solitaire type game for, for two people. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Meeple Watchers, thanks so much for joining us for our top 10 board games for the year 2020. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more updates and leave a comment below letting us know what your top 10 board games are. And maybe we will start to review some of those in the upcoming year. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.